third observation I make, if you're gonna live single and secure, is you have to know this, that bitterness is ugly, but faithfulness is always attractive. See, the story of Ruth is not a story of one single girl, it's a story of two single women. And really, to understand the full context, you have to understand the background of Naomi and her husband, Elimelech. They are from the region of Judah, which means that they are God's people. They were living under the law of God, and they were in covenant with God. They're from the town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem had a severe famine, and it forced Elimelech and Naomi, when I say forced, they chose to go to Moab. Moab was a godless, secular place. They had no business living in Moab. You read the Old Testament, you'll find story after story of the Israelites fighting with the Moabites. It was their enemies. And there they went and started a home and a future. Listen to me loud and clear. It is much better to be hungry in the will of God than to be well-fed outside of his will. They had no business living over there. And when they get there, their sons end up marrying Moabite women, women that did not honor God. They converted over to the God of Israel. But a, a According to the timeline, all three men end up dying. It just reminds me that you can run from a famine, but you can't escape death. And this family, they, they, they ran in the tough time. And now she's there with her two daughters-in-law. And she hears that Bethlehem is now prospering again. Because you don't serve the God of seconds. You serve the God of seasons. There's ebbs and flows. C.S. Lewis calls it peaks and troughs, mountaintops and valleys. He takes you from one mountaintop to the next mountaintop, but the only way to get to that mountaintop is you have to go through the valley. Just because you're in the valley doesn't mean you should run and be afraid. You should stand firm and watch that God will bring you into a glorious future. So now Bethlehem's all like, it's, it's, it's vibing again. And she's like, I'm going home. And what appears to be a very noble act in Ruth chapter one is actually, actually quite deceitful. She says, hey, girls, you, you stay here in Moab. I'm going to go back to Bethlehem. Why did she want the girls to stay there in Moab? It's because she wanted to shed the evidence of where she had been when she got back home. You know that feeling, right? You met Jesus. You got on fire for him, and somehow you got plugged into community, and then somehow you wandered off like the prodigal. And when it came time for you to come home, what did you try to do? You tried to shed all the evidence. I was talking to a guy not too long ago. He's like, bro, I like coming to VU, but everyone's always like, where you been? It annoys me. I said, the only reason why it annoys you is because wherever you were at, you're ashamed of. And she was ashamed of where she had been. So she said, stay here, which sounds noble, but listen to how deceitful and how conniving it actually is. For those women to stay there meant they were going to marry Moabite men. And if they married Moabite men, it means they were denouncing their faith. Orpah, she actually makes this decision, which solidifies her future. But Ruth, she says, oh no, my faith is not in you, Naomi. My faith is in God, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. She literally walks in, and when she walks in, they're like, Naomi? She's like, no, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which literally means bitter. It's one thing to get bitter. It's another thing to be bitter. Call me by my name. All right, what up, bitter? <laughs> that, that's the state that she's in. Yet, friend, and hear me as your friend tonight, bitterness is ugly. Bitterness literally deflects the blessing of God. It deflects the opportunities that God brings your way. Some of you, you're single in this place and you have a desire to have a spouse or to have a relationship and that's an awesome godly desire. There is nothing wrong with that. But hear me, if you walk around bitter for too long, the very thing that you're asking God for, you're gonna deter away from your life. I don't care who you talk to. Nobody puts on their list of qualities, number one, get me a girl who's bitter. Yeah. See her? All bitter and all, y'all. I never met a girl in my life who's like, oh, yeah, get me a man who's bitter. Get me a project. Like, nah, girls don't think that way. It's, it, it's deflecting what you want. The truth of the matter is, is that maybe you have been waiting for a long time, but maybe it's not just that you're waiting. Maybe it's a deeper situation than that. Maybe you're wounded. When you start talking about relationships, it's, it's not a laughing matter because it's very sensitive. And there's people in this room tonight that are, that are wounded. And maybe you're wounded not because you did something wrong, but maybe because someone did something wrong to you. Maybe someone hurt you. Maybe someone 
cheated on you, left you, betrayed you. Maybe someone abused you verbally or even at worst, physically. And you're carrying this wound around. And the challenge with an open wound that never gets addressed is that wound will only fester and bitterness is the result. Maybe it's not what other people did. Let's be honest tonight. When it comes to relationships, maybe it's something that you did. Maybe you're having a hard time because you've wounded yourself that you know your actions have caused consequences in your life. It's not popular preaching, especially in Miami, Florida, in Wynwood and Little Haiti, but the scripture says that sexual sin is the only sin that we do against our own body. It's a wild concept because you could be here tonight and you don't even believe this stuff. You're like, these people are crazy, shouting and jumping, this man up here, I don't even, there ain't no God. And that's cool, you can have your own ideas and you can think that way. But what's wild is that you don't even believe in God, you haven't even subscribed to Jesus, but here you are and you think about that thought. You've had all the freedom you wanted. You've done all the things that you thought would bring you joy. You've had all sorts of experiences and pleasure, yet somehow you're in this room and you are carrying shame, guilt, pain, and the result is bitterness. It's wild because, did you see that? That Naomi, she's actually blaming God for her stupidity. (laughs) And you gotta be careful. There can be a lot of causes to your loneliness. And there can be a lot of causes to your bitterness. But I wanna remind you that God is good. That he has not brought harm upon your life. God hasn't caused this suffering in your life. God didn't force you in that toxic relationship. God didn't cause you to lower your standard. God didn't cause you to completely dismiss all of the counsel that was around you. God didn't cause you to isolate and not go to people and not go to community. And now the result is that you have a bitter heart. It's wild, right? Because Ruth, like Naomi, has experienced something quite similar. She too is a widow. But unlike Naomi, she has a completely different perspective on the situation. Make no mistake about it. It is not the faithfulness of Naomi in the story, but rather it's the faithfulness of Ruth that turns the entire situation around. Ruth has this revelation and she makes this decision that I'm gonna gonna stay faithful because faithfulness is always attractive. And the only way to remove bitterness in your heart is to take responsibility through forgiveness. And at the risk of being very, very offensive to people that have gone through tragic, horrible, awful things, the only way that you're ever going to release and get back to a heart of faithfulness and remove the bitterness is when you forgive those that have caused you harm, hurt, and who have completely done unjust things to you. Yet what I've learned on this journey of faith is sometimes the hardest people to forgive are not others, but just simply forgiving ourselves. But can I encourage you today? Let it go. That you are not defined by your mistakes. You are not defined by your habits. You're not defined even by your decisions. But rather you are a child of God. And his grace is bigger than any mistake than you could ever commit, past, present, or future. And today you got to forgive yourself so that you can move into the future that he has for you. Whether you're married or single, in a relationship, questioning a relationship, you can be secure in the season that you are in. Bitterness, it's always ugly. Faithfulness, it's always attractive. 